This episode of Soon Sports Podcast is brought to you by Tyler Solutions. Tyler Solutions is an essential service company who can take care of all your essential service needs. We talking about electric, gas, internet, cable, identity theft protection. If your identity has been stolen, look no further. Go to www.tylersolutions.net. That's www.tylersolutions.net. Hit us up on the internet, leave your information, and we'll get right back to you. Also, if you're looking to make some money, part-time, spare time, anytime, look no further. Leave your information, and one of the associates will get back to you. Uh, We got a special guest today, Mr. Jay Butler, University of Virginia Union. This should be a good one. This should be a good one. So look no further as we get into this interview. This meeting is being recorded. Good evening, good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We got a legend in the building. We got a legend in the building, DC Zone, Mr. Jay Butler, Virginia Union, coach, uh, former University of District of Columbia, uh, girls basketball coach, and uh, a former Archbishop Curl alumni. Uh, it, it don't get no better than this, you guys. Uh, I just want to thank him for coming out and uh, sharing his time with us and expertise in a in a game of basketball, coaching as well as a player, as well as a um, person from the area who 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 knows the game inside and out, played the game, coached the game, then played with some legends. I give you no other than Mr. Jay Butler. How you doing, sir? I'm doing pretty good. Man, thanks for having me. Hey, there's no no question. I gotta ha- I gotta have you uh, look looked up to you. You know, uh, follow you and, and been seeing you in the area, uh, games and all, giving back to the community, recruiting some of the 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 finest um, athletes, student athletes in the area. So I had to bring you on just to uh, pick your brain and, and just so you can educate some of the other um, coaches who wanna you know, level up and, and some of the student athletes that want to get to the next level and just pick your brain and basically talk basketball. So, so again, honored to have you on. I want to start off if, for the people that don't know who you are. Uh, can you give them a short, brief background of who you are and, and, and how you became a uh, coach for Virginia Union University? I uh, like you said, born and raised in the D.C. area. Uh, grew up playing AAU basketball, played on one of the top AAU programs uh, in the country. Back then, it was the Allentown Go-Getters. And uh, we was blessed to win three national championships. Uh, played with some of the guys that's out there now. Uh, Mike Jones, Ted Ellis, Dwayne Simpkins, Robert Frost, Vaughn Jones. Uh, the list go on and on. Kevin Young. Guys that's coaching, played against some of the best guys, you know, the the the, the Moochie Norris, Greg Jones, Pep, Earl Tyson. So, you know, had the opportunity to play basketball on a high level, won three national championships, ended up uh going to Archbishop Carroll, played, played uh my first two year, well, my first year, played on the JV team and then moved up to Varsity, was blessed to play with. Uh, Charles Harrison, rest in peace, my guy Charlie Mo, uh, and Lawrence Moten. You know, those, those, I learned a lot from those two guys, and uh, you know, never really had to, you know, to sit and watch. But that year, as a 10th grade, I learned so much playing on that team at uh, Archbishop Carroll, played for Carroll Holmes, you know, one of the legendary coaches coming out of the DC area, uh, played AAU with my dad. Uh, Lester Rocky Butler coached over at Blaisberg. He's still coaching now. And it's been over 30 years. Wow. So he coached me in the AAU ranks. And uh, so I've been blessed. And I think, you know, coming up, I was kind of always kind of groomed. I think everybody knew that I was going to be a coach. Okay. You know, a lot of guys dream of, you know, going overseas and playing pro ball. And, you know, I had those dreams, but I kind of knew. Because from day one, no matter what team I played on, I was a leader. 
Uh, you know, I was an extension of the coaching staff, just had a great basketball IQ, and uh, just knew every position on the court, just was a floor general. So, you know, I was blessed to get a scholarship, full scholarship to Virginia Union. They were coming off of winning the national championship. And uh, I was blessed to go into a program that was number one in the country. Uh, we won three CIAA championships, four NCAA appearances, uh, won over uh, probably the winners player there. I think we won like 114 games, 11 losses. So uh, just, just, just played it on a, a loaded basketball team. Uh, was blessed to play my last two years with uh, Hall of Famer Ben Wallace. So uh, just, just, just been blessed to play with some talented guys, a great group of guys. Uh, learned a lot about the game. Played for legendary coach Dave Robbins, who's a Hall of Famer, won over 700 games. So you know the one thing I just been around, I've been around all my life is just winning. Winning, whether we're on the court or whether we're off the court, just winning in the game of life. Absolutely, absolutely. So, and, and here, hello, it, I think it muted. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. So, so, yeah, I get you. In detail, uh, what you were saying, you said your father uh, was a coach and still is a coach to this day. Yes, sir. <laughs> at, at the time, at the time you was coming up and, and through high school, was he coaching high school or was he just coaching AAU or, or what? When when he was coaching high school and AAU at the same time. What, so what? he was coaching, he was coaching, he was coaching boys, AAU. Mm. And he actually coached my sister for a couple of years at Friendly High School on the girls' side and went from Friendly High School and went over to Blaisburg High School where he won a state championship. Wow. So he's been over at Blaisburg since late late 80s to wow. now and he's there yeah wow so you, you talk about almost 30 40 years he never wanted to get you to um play for him in high school Did, i know that had to be tough well he coached, well, he coached on the girl side oh. he coached on, on the girl side and 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 on that aau team we were we were we were loaded and yeah. I think it's going in and out. Uh, I don't know what was going on. Come back. I can't. I can't. I can't get nothing from you right now. I can't even hear you. We were so good that that team. We had six, seven guys. Where I, I just like I'm not at the map. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. It was it was going in and out. But go. So okay. Can you can you retract back over what you were saying? My dad. Uh, my dad was coaching, he was coaching on the girls' side on the high school ranks. Okay. So he was uh he was at Friendly High School as assistant coach, then he moved on and took over head coach at uh Blaisburg High School. So he was on the girls' side coaching uh in the high school, and then he coached us AAU. And we were number one in the country. Like I said, we had guys, Greg, Greg Williams, Lutiki, Colombo. I mean, we had guys that were playing big time basketball, and those guys, we had like six, seven guys that went to DeMatha. Wow. And I chose to go to Curl, and uh, we ended up playing a couple more years, won one more national championship, then the high school coaches wanted us to focus on our high school teams. Okay. So we really kind of shut down our AAU program after that wow. and uh, really kind of focused on the high school our last year or two. Okay. And, uh, but uh, just some of the best time of my life playing AAU ball. Wow. And I know things change now with the AAU. So so much going on with yeah. the tennis shoe companies and, Different things like that, man. Back in the day, you know, we were washing cars and on on the corner right. on Sheriff Road, Bitter Road, right. and you know, with the buckets. Yes. You know, trying to fundraise. So we did everything to fundraise, and we we traveled all over the world. But that's some of the best times of my life playing that AAU basketball. Absolutely, absolutely. So when you was coming up through uh, Archbishop Curl, was you? highly recruited during that time or or was your only uh destination was like d2 ball or, or or different things like that can you run us through I was, uh, I, I, was, I was getting letters i was getting letters because we were we were so good and i started on that team we played with a lot of great players i was getting letters from division one schools because we were playing against some of the top players in the country and i was holding my own 
You know, you know, we played against some of the best, and I would hold my own. And you know, I was a small point guard, but I wasn't a I wasn't a big time score. So I would run a team, I would defend, and I was smart as a whip. And so I would get Division One ladders. My grades at that time wasn't wasn't the best. So, you know, that kind of held me up. And you couldn't be a small point guard and not have your grades where, you know, they needed to be. Yeah. So, but it was enough that, you know, and I, I I just wanted to play. I wanted to go to college. My parents wanted me to, you know, move on and, you know, get my degree and different things like that. Yeah. And Virginia Union blessed me with the opportunity to play, play at a high level. And it was the best four years of my life from 92 to 96. Yeah. Uh, you know, we played you know, some, of, some of the best basketball. We were number one in the country. Won three three CIAA championships, you know. Now I'm blessed to win one as a coach. So you know, I, I, right now I'm just you know living the dream. You know, <laughs> sitting this is my second home down here at Virginia Union at Richmond. So just to have the opportunity to come back and coach, you know, and and uh, you know give back. I got a lot of guys from the DMV area, you which did. you know that's 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 my roots. <laughs> so you know I'm gonna come home and I'm gonna recruit. Yeah. And you know it's all about relationship. And them guys that I grew up with, played with, you know, went up against, you know, they all know that Jay yeah, a good dude. Yeah. Good dude. He always knew the game. And, you know, hey, he going he gonna to treat the kids right. And at the end of the day, we're going to graduate kids. Absolutely. You you, you, you kind of beat me to it. I'm going to come back to that, what you said about recruiting in the DMV area. But what I wanted to ask you about uh, the uh, – University of District of Columbia Hall of Fame. You was inducted to the Hall of Fame uh, for UDC. Can you talk about that a little bit and, and what it meant to you to be inducted? Man, that when I got the call and the email, I just was like, "Hey, I'm only I'm I'm in my forties. I'm I'm like I haven't did anything, you know, that much, you know. But it was a tremendous honor uh, when you when you talk about Michael Britt Earl. Earl Jones and you know the, the the legends that came out of there yeah. uh, and, and and to be mentioned with those guys and to go in and coach I gotta give a shout out to Stephanie Evans when I was coaching with my dad over at Bladesburg High School we went to the state semifinals uh we made a run and uh she asked me to come up and help her as an assistant coach and I went up there we we won a few games she moved on to Virginia State I took over at UDC and at that time, you know, UDC, were, we were an independent school. Everybody wanted to play UDC. And at that time, they were, they were, they were beating up on us. And, and over the years, we took that program and turned it into a top 25 program. Uh, was blessed to win uh, 20 games four or five times. Uh, made it to the NCAA four times. Uh, ranked in the top 25. And uh, to win uh, over 177 games, close to 180 games. And uh, just to get that call to be honored as a, you know, a Hall of Famer, you know, it's a blessing. You know, you know, I, was, I got into the game in my early 20s and, uh, and I told her, I've been coaching a head coach now for 20 years. So, you know, and I'm, I'm still, you know, I feel good. You know, I'm, I'm walking all the time. Yeah. So uh, I still feel good. I'm young. I think I can coach another 20, 30 years. That's awesome, man. Awesome. Can you tell us, um, personally, like, I want to know, like, um, the upcoming from, like, because you said you went to Virginia Union from 92 to 96, far as plan-wise. When you graduated from Virginia Union, what was the process of, like, uh, you getting into coaching? Uh, well, I always had the avenue with my dad. So when I got home, you know, I was still playing ball and, you know, still going playing in the leagues and different things like that. But I knew that I wanted to get into coaching. I started uh, started a little AAU team, DC Rising Stars. Had a uh, little Dirk Washington, that, that coach up at Coolidge. Yeah. Uh, Herman Frazier just, just was named uh, athletic director at Coolidge. Yeah. Uh, little Josh uh, over in Southeast, Bitter Pop. Yeah. So I had those little guys and I was coaching them. And I was helping out uh, Coach Evans up at UDC and just off a relationship. I was I was blessed to go into, you know, work out with my dad. I was working at uh, Blaisberg High School as a probation officer. So uh, I was a probation officer, full-time job. My dad asked me to help him out with the varsity team. I was head coach JV and went from there. 
and, and took a sister job at, U, at UDC and never really got caught up on. I saw my dad coach at a high level on the women and the men's side. So girls, guys, it really didn't matter. It was just all about, you know, getting getting young ladies and getting young men to take them places that they've never been, you know, went there before, you know, with by themselves. So it, it was just an opportunity just to, to continue to, to teach the game, uh, compete, stay involved, and, and, and get get young ladies and young men opportunity to go to college, get them uh, scholarship offers, and ultimately get their degrees and move on so they can be successful in life. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, going back to uh, the recruitment, man, um, I, I noticed I looked at your roster over the years, and, and, and it's always somebody from the DMV area on that roster. Uh, can you yeah. talk about uh, is that is that the secret to your success of the uh, Virginia Union coming back home and getting some of the uh, talented uh, student athletes that we have up here in this area? Well, when I played, when I played from '92 to '96, a lot of people, some of my teammates was from the uh, D.C., Maryland, uh, Virginia area. Uh, good friend of mine, teammate. James Scoop Marshall. James Scoop Marshall played at Dunbar, top 100 basketball player, Division One. Went to UTEP, uh, transferred to Delaware State. Ended up at Virginia Union with me. Uh, Lorenzo Roche, good friend of mine, played at D Dunbar. Frank Chain was one of my best friends, man, and uh, you know one of the successful businessmen in DC. Uh, played with me at uh, Virginia Union. Uh, Marquise Newby played with me at high school and end up transferring to Virginia Union my last year and played with me, and we went to the Final Four. So Virginia Union basketball, the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, it, 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 it was it was you know, an hour and a half away from, you know, home. It, you know, it was, a, it was an easy commute. And just to go home, I got so many different relationships with guys in the D.C. area, out Maryland, out Northern Virginia, and it's just easy to go home just with relationships and, and, and recruit those guys. D.C. area is probably the best uh, talent in the country. You know, you can see from the AAU team to the nationally ranked high school teams that it, it, they play basketball at a high level. You know, D.C. is one of the top programs, you know, top top basketball cities, you know, around. So just to have the opportunity to get back and, and, and get in the trenches and, you know, and go see my guys is coaching. I played with them, played against them, and see them coaching the high school level, coaching AAU teams at a high level, just to be, go back and recruit those guys. And at the end of the day, I tell people all the time, it's all about relationships. You know, once you got relationship, things can just, you know, you can get players, you you know, you 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 can get it, you can get jobs done. You you can do a lot of things just off of just having relationships. Absolutely, absolutely. A uh, couple of more questions, man. I, I you know. This is uh, Coach Jay Butler from Virginia Union, one of the all-time uh, people from the area. And it's exciting to have him on here, man. I, I really appreciate this. Um, one of the questions that I want to ask you is about uh, as far as recruitment now and, um, uh, you know, with, with you know, the, the player likeness and, and, and different things that you can get paid off of now. Uh, how is that? Uh, how have you adjusted to that and some of the things that uh, parents need to look out for in getting into college and, and different things? Because what I noticed in, in the city, a lot of people, they they not, some of the people are not prepared for, you know, the next level, far as academics, far as, uh, you know, your SAT scores and stuff like that. And what I noticed is with, with the new transfer portal and, and different things of that nature. How has that? How have you adjusted to that? And what can you tell the parents to to do just to you know get acc get acclimated to coming to school or or, or being prepared? Well the, well, the well, the first thing is from 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 the time that you start in the ninth grade, just just that process. You you got to you got to tell your kids right away that. So you step foot into high school, those grades in your ninth grade year is so crucial to you getting a scholarship when you're in the 12th grade. You can't just get to the 12th grade and get that work done. It, it 
got to be done, you know, in the ninth grade, the 10th grade, the 11th grade, the 12th grade. And, uh, you know, do your research, trust, trust the process, trust your coaches. And, uh, you know, I, I say it all the time right now. It's tough. It's, it's tough coming out of high school. You know, you're talking about thing going on with this, with this COVID and the pandemic, everything we had going on is players on top of players, on top of players, that's looking for opportunities. Right. And I tell kids all the time, if you got a coach that wants you, you know, they, they want you to be a part of their program, you really need to entertain it. Don't get caught up on, on levels, Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three. If, if you can play, and you hear me all the time on social media, if you can play, you can hoop, they're going to find you. You know, if you look into the playoff, NBA playoffs right now, you got some guys that play Division Two, II, Division Three. A uh, young man that played with uh, the Miami Heat, he actually played against us. He, he played at Fairmont State and played at Will and Jesuit uh, for two years. And we played against him on a Division II level. He's playing he playing with the Miami Heat right now. So you can't get caught up on levels. You just got to just give me an opportunity to continue to play, go to school, get my education. If you're blessed to get a scholarship, take it and run with it. it, it you know, whether it's the NCAA, NAIA junior college, just, 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 just give yourself an opportunity to, to, to go on, get your education, you know, go through college, get your degree and, and, and move on and be successful. Whether you get an opportunity to go overseas, whether you get an opportunity to play in the league, at the end of the day, you just want to be productive in life and, and, and be able to move on. So I, I try to tell the parents all the time, just, just, just trust, trust your administrators, trust, trust your coaches. You know, you know, the bouncing around schools and different things like that. Just, just go to a school, get your education, play basketball, have fun, play hard, and 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 anytime you get an opportunity to, you know, get a college coach in front of you, you, you know, you you you, and they, and they want you. You definitely need. Don't don't get caught up on the level. Please don't get caught up on the level. Absolutely, absolutely. Um. Uh I, I got a chance to see y'all this year, uh, this past uh, season that just uh, left. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about that season, you you was in the CIAA championship, uh, took a hard loss to uh, Fairville State. Um, getting to that point and, and, you know, getting to the championship, the CIAA championship, which is a big thing, uh, a lot of people – for those that don't know about the CIAA, can you talk about the CIAA and talk about that uh, getting to the championship and what are you doing now to 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 get prepared for this upcoming season of next year? Uh, CIAA, a lot of people don't know. CIAA tournament is probably the top three in the country of attendance. And, it, and they always said it was in between the ACC and the Big East. Uh, our championship game had every bit of 13, 14,000 in the stands. And uh, it's, it's a big time event. Uh, of, of course, a lot of people know about the parties and different things that go on, you know, at the CIAA tournament. But it's, it's, a, it's, some, it's some tough basketball being played on the men and the women's side in the CIAA. And they represent it a lot by division, I mean, uh, DMV kids. And that's on the men and the women's side. So, you know, we played basketball at a high level. We were blessed to play in a championship game against a very good Fayetteville State team. And uh, we were coming off the pandemic where we shut down and we were out of basketball for over a year and a half. So to get those guys to come back and play at a high level, we had, we won 23 games. Uh, we played some, te some teams that went on and uh, played in the NCAA. I thought we should have made the NCAA, but we got left out. Uh, we played the number one team in the country, had them beat at their home court with 1.4 seconds. Things happened. The game went in overtime. We ended up losing. They went on. They were undefeated the entire year. So uh, we played basketball at a high level. Uh, I tell kids all the time, we was blessed to win the CP3 uh, tournament. Shout out to Chris Paul. He's a... Uh, He's putting on a great HBCU classic tournament and our uh, on ESPN. So we, we was blessed to showcase our talent playing against a, a tough Winston-Salem team. We were blessed to win that championship early in November. So 
I just thought this year we had a successful year. But CIAA basketball, I, I call it similar to that Big East basketball back in the day. Uh, it's, it's just tough. You know, you can go into a tough Elizabeth City with a hostile crowd or Winston-Salem, which probably got one of the best atmospheres in the country. And you got it's tough places to play. Livingstone, Bowie State, Virginia State, of course, that's a rival game for us. So you're talking about night in and night out. You're playing top top talent, tough games. And uh, just just to get to the you know, championship game, of course, we wanted to win it. But, you know, to win 23 games, uh, we returned a great group of guys. I thought those guys had a chance to experience being at the championship game. I think we'll be much more uh, prepared to uh, cut the nets down next year. Absolutely, absolutely. And speaking speaking of your team, right, in particular, I know a couple of players that play for you. Uh, Khalif Tate, uh, my man, uh, what can we, because I, I feel like he was getting adjusted. You know, we had, like you said, the pandemic year. And wow. with that, and then he getting adjusted to, you know, CIAA basketball and being at Virginia Union. What can we expect from not just him, but some other guys that's on your team, but mainly him, because that's one of the guys I know. But what can we expect from him this right. year? Is he going to be more comfortable and, and, and relaxed and far as, uh, you know, season play this upcoming year? Yeah, I thought I thought Khalif had a great year. He, uh, he really, he also had to sit out because of the NCAA rules before the pandemic. So Khalif had actually been out of basketball almost a little bit over two years. So just him getting back to playing game, playing the game that he loved, playing at a, a high level, and he showed flashes during the year. He led us in scoring a couple games, had a couple games of five, six, seven threes, uh, hit a couple game winners for us. Uh, he struggled a little bit in the championship game, and and I think that it got a little bad taste in his mouth. And I think he's gonna come back. And you know, I I, I predict him to be probably one of the better. Guards in the conference this year probably be preseason all CIAA, but we got quite a few guys. Uh, young man Rashid Gadlin helped us in the semifinals against uh, Winston Salem Dunbar product, uh, Demarius Pitts out of uh, Douglas High School. Uh, so we got a lot of kids out of the you know the DMV area, but you know also I tell I tell my guys all the time I say I can't take everybody from DC. We got a lot of talent across the state of Virginia as well. So, you know, I lead score Robert Osborne from Richmond, Virginia. And, you know, the one thing I'm most proud of, we had six, seven guys graduate this Absolutely. year and a couple of them coming back to go to grad school. So, you know, we've we, we been getting it done on the court, but we also been getting it done off the court, and, you know, getting these guys to get their degree and moving on. And we've been blessed with some guys to go overseas, but we haven't been able to get that pro yet. But we 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 waiting we waiting uh, for someone to get, take that chance on us and say, hey, I'm gonna go to Virginia Union, play a year or two, put my name in the draft, and and then go pro. So you know, I tell them all the time, you know, if you come here and play, if you can hoop, they gonna find you. So Absolutely. you know, if we we can get that four or five star talent to come in. I think that's when you know we'll, we'll be ready to take off and and produce that next pro. Absolutely. And speaking speaking on that, uh, how do you feel about that? Because uh, on on the football side of it, you got uh, Deion Sanders at Jackson State, who who's getting all the little four stars and five stars. And, and I don't know, maybe it's because of the name or, and, and prime time and, and different things like that. Then you had the the kid, uh, uh, I forgot his name, went to Howard. Or whatever. Do you see? Uh, Maker, do, you, yeah. do you go out the? Uh, yeah, Mega Mega. Do you? Do you? Do you? Do you go out the them type of players sometimes every now and then, or is it a toss? So what I what I, what I what I do what I do recruit wise, I try to go out to you know all the events, and I I try to identify. Sometimes we actually go out after those kids, or sometimes it's a relationship that I know. I might know a kid that's a full five-star athlete. I might know his uncle, I know his dad, I might know someone in the family. And I say, hey, man, we love the kid. No, we probably can't get him. But when things don't work out or if, it, you know, if, if, if something happened and he has to drop down a level, hey, keep us in mind. And, you know, that's, you know, I've been blessed to get the Khalif Tates and, you know, different, you know, guys that played at the division level, uh, Darius Hines, 
who played at Bishop Orange and went to Maris up in New York and transferred back to Virginia Union. So, you know, it, it's, it's different ways you can go about it recruiting. Uh, so I go out and recruit. We, we, we keep a database and, and, and we identify those kids that's high level. And then we try our best just to keep track of them. You know, and when they, when those guys hit the portal, you know, we, we we reach out to family and friends and say, hey, we, we here. Yeah. You know, and sometimes it work out and, you know, they say, well, Coach Bob was the first one that offered me, you know, even though I went to Division One. But, you know, I know I know my high school coach know him and, you know, one of my best friends or my uncle, I know he's going to take care of me. Yeah. So, you know, and the one thing we get those kids come in and they say, Coach, man, I played for you for one, two, three years. I wish I would have came straight out of high school. You know, it's the school, the basketball, just the total experience, that HBCU experience. They say that was, that was the best best year of my life. You know, I had a one big kid transfer from Hofstra. He came in, helped us win the CIAA tournament, and he said, man, I wish I came here uh, my, my all four years. So, you know, so those kids come in and, and, and enjoy the HBCU experience. And, you know, I tell them, if you can go Division One, you know, go. You know, when things don't work out or if, if, if you're having some problems, you got to you gotta make a move, just, you know, keep us in mind, give us a call. But, you know, Dion, Dion, Dion is Dion. Dion all the favor. You know, he he's iconic. So Dion, Dion can, 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 can go in and, and, and pull that full five-star, plus they Division One. It's just, just giving them the opportunity. And right now, Dion is showing them that, hey, you come into, you know, to, to Jackson State, hey, we're we going to get it done. We're going to play against some of the best teams. And, that, and that's that's what all the HBCU schools, yeah. all those schools just need an opportunity that, you know, get, get, give us a chance. You know, we're we, we going to play on a high level. You're going to have the same, you'll get a good education. And, and at the end of the day, you're going to get that opportunity to play in the league. You know, I, I was happy for Coach Blakeney, uh, the math, the guy, you know, I was happy for him when he got the big fella, yeah. uh, the five-star athlete, you know, and I, I, I wish he'd have played a little longer because I know that opened up the door for, you know, a kid to want to come to Virginia Union. So it, it, it was just right now, it's good. It's good. So, you know, I had a couple of kids played in the HBCU All-Star, played on CBS. And I tell kids, I said, we on ESPN. Uh, the year that we won it, we was one of the first ones to play. Zion and them at Duke. Right. Zion, uh, Cam Reddish, uh, R.J. Bird. We, we played against them. Dudes gave them fits for about the first half and about 10 minutes of the second half. Yeah. And then, you know, they beat us about maybe 30. They turned around a week later and beat Kentucky by 40. So, yeah. Yeah. And Carl said, hey, you want to play Kentucky? I said, slow down. Slow yeah. down. I said, I don't think you're ready for that. But it was just a – and I had the opportunity to meet Coach K. So you talking about a kid from the D.C. area. Just I don't even remember what he said to me. You know, Coach K shook my hand. He said I was speechless. Right. So you know, just the opportunity to coach on it with a with a, a legend, a, a Hall of Famer. I, I, it was priceless for me. Absolutely, absolutely. A uh, couple more questions. Um, what would you say to a kid that and, and, and far as um. You know, if they missed a year, of, they play high school ball, they missed a year of high school ball, and they trying to get back into, uh, you know, wanting to play at the collegiate level. What route would you uh, suggest for that young girl or the, young man to take? The, the, the one thing you got, and it was tough with the pandemic year, especially for the kids that were graduating the year that we shut down. I mean, that, that was tough. So if they didn't have an opportunity to come back and play with their high school the next year and they had to move on, you know, you had opportunities. I think, the you know, the prep schools, the prep schools kind of, you know, were out there. And I think a lot of those kids flooded the prep schools and, you know, it, it ended up being kind of costly for some parents and you got the JUCO ranks. And then now, you know, even out here, you know, we, we just started this year coming up. We got a JV program that we get ready to start just to give – kids an opportunity to keep, you know, keep having the opportunity to play the game that they love, be able to get your ed education. And, you know, if you want to stick and move on to a, another situation, if you want to stick, get an opportunity to, to move up to our varsity team, you got, you got the chance. So we, 
right now we're putting that out there. We got we're gonna bring in about 14, 15 guys, and we're gonna have a JV team. But I, you know, I would say, you know, just just, just look at all options, you know, whether it's prep school, whether it's, you know, a lot of kids get caught up on this. I'm, I'm telling you, Division three, there's a lot of Division three schools that I wouldn't want to play. Just the style of play, the way they play the game, and, and it's they play at a high level. Yeah. So you got some very good Division three team. You got some a, uh, NAIA schools that are just very good. Uh, shout out to my guy Malcolm Battle. He does a great job. He's a good friend of mine. He does a good job in the city. Rob Nickens. Uh, uh, Lil Durkey, Washington, those guys, they really, really working hard pushing them kids into schools. And uh, and, and they start to get creative with it, where it's not only just your your, your Division One schools, it's Division Two, II, Division Threes, NAIA schools out there, uh, you know, the JUCO ranks. It, it, it is always, you know, for, for the full five-star, it's a little easier for that kid just looking for an opportunity. You know, you might got to go through the JUCO ranks. But, I mean, it's guys that made it to the league, you know, from JUCO, went to a four-year, and end up, you know, the young man from the Boston Celtics, uh, the kid White, you know, he played at Division II school in Colorado, then went on and, and played at uh, the University of Colorado, and then we ended up getting into the league. You know, and it's all started. They wanted him to come walk on at, at the Division II school. So, you know, just don't pass up an opportunity that you think this might be a lower, lower, lower level. You know, get in there, you can go in there, play hard, do your best. And then, you know, you never know what door might open up to the next one. Absolutely. Hey, man, it's been it's been an honor, man, uh, to have you on. Uh, your prediction for uh, the uh, NBA final. <laughs> I, I, I need to Boston. hear you. Boston. Boston is sick. And, and look, a lot of people, they just see me put it out there. But Boston probably got one of the top defensive teams, you know, in the NBA. You know, they can switch one through five and guard. Uh, of course, go to state. They got a they got a, a, a tremendous basketball team. Uh, those those guys got they high IQ. They can flat out shoot it. And uh don't I don't have it. They 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 call me the, the Steph hater, but I, I don't I love Steph. Steph is probably the best shooter ever. Yeah. Hands down. He's the, he the greatest shooter ever. You know, I get caught up because I was a true point guard, floor general. Don't say Steph a point guard. That's all I say. <laughs> Steph Curry is not a point guard. He's yeah. probably the best shooter ever. He's probably one of the greatest guards ever, but he's not no point guard. I thought one time they said on ESPN he was better than Magic Johnson at. And I said I wanted to I wanted to throw a brick at the TV when I when I'd heard that. You know, he's not a point guard, you know, but he's, he's an unbelievable shooter. Yes, he changed the game. Because yeah. anytime you can come across half court, he's he's in range. Yeah. But I just think Ball Stan, they, they 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 stole one in Golden State and they showed that they they dominated that game. So, you know, they they, they stole one. I think tonight Boston gonna get this one, go up two one. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna get the second one in balls and go up three one, and then after that, it's, it's over with. I think Golden State might get one more, <laughs> but at the end of the day, Boston is six. Absolutely, and a star on the rise in Tatum. Yes, I, absolutely, absolutely. You're gonna get a lot of uh, kickback on this when this when this come out. But um, <laughs> last but not least, man. Um, any any words of uh for the for the student athletes, not just in um DC, Maryland, and Virginia, but worldwide, that you could uh anything that you could say to them or and um them and the parents, man. Everybody learning, you know, we we we've been through the COVID situation, you know, uh certain parents don't know what it is to to, to, to be uh eligible to play on the next level. Anything that you could tell them. But the one thing I, I just want to, and I, and I say it all the time, I said I wish I could go to, like, every state and just talk to some of the parents, you know, before they making those decisions with these AAU teams. You know, a college coach don't want to see kids jumping team to team, different things like that. Go to one program, stick with it. You know, when we grew up, things, you know, things wasn't working out right. We, we, we was told to, to toughen it out. You know, it, it, 
you know, don't don't run to another team just because you're not playing as much. Go in there and work work that much harder, you know. And and I just think that you know, just start early because when you when you when you jump in schools like that, it, it goes straight to college when you got this transfer portal now. And then you got 1,500, 2,000 kids just transferring now all, all over. And you know, and and I, I don't have a I don't have a problem with the transfer portal because sometimes coaches leave, and so kids should have the opportunity. But kids shouldn't be jumping school to school every year. You know, go in, and stick it out, make the best. When you sign on the dotted line, you you saying that I'm committed to the school. I'm committed to get my education. Come in, I'm gonna work hard, play basketball at a high level. And I'm gonna get my degree, but I just think you know, just at this time, just, 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 just trust. Uh, we always say trust the process, trust the process, and then it just kind of, cause like right now, it's everybody can't make it to the league. No. But you know, everybody can you know work hard and get their degree and, and move on, be basketball coaches and lawyers and different things like that. There's so many different opportunities out here. So just, just to. For me to get the best four years of my life was at Virginia Union. So I tell kids all the time, if you can get to it, don't have to be Virginia Union. You can get to an HBCU, it's not like it. And I, I grew up in DC, the Go Go's and the, all the different things like that. I party and I party real good. But at the end of the day, it's nothing like being at an HBCU. You talking about getting a good education, you probably meeting your future wife. Uh, you talk about partying on a whole nother level. And, and then you got professors and teachers and coaches that truly, truly just care about you. Absolutely. You know, and it's not one of those, you're number one, 92 out of 5,000 in the class. You know, you got small classes, 20, 25. You know, you need that extra attention. That type of stuff worked for me. You know, I, I was blessed that I can go to my professors and say, hey, you know, I, I need some help with this paper. You know, this, if not, I, I wouldn't have got I wouldn't have got through. Absolutely. So, you know, just 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 don't be limited to my son going to Duke, my son going to Maryland, my son going to Georgetown. Nah, your son can go to uh Bowie State, your son can go to UDC, your son can go to Virginia Union, Grambling, uh NAI school, Washington Venice, you can go to uh St. Thomas, you got a D DMV guy, St. Thomas University out in Miami. Wow. So, you know, those options are open and just be able to and be willing to go say, hey, sometimes your kid need to go away and then, you know, just to grow up a little bit. Yeah. So just just it's, it's, it's sometimes it's tough. Everybody can't get a scholarship, but it's grants out there. It's all kinds. UNCF It's money out there for you to go to school. If you want to get your education, you can get, it. you know, so don't get caught up on it. You know, I can't afford it. No, if you want to go to school, you can get it done. And before I was, that, that was it for me, but I want to touch on something you said, Father. Uh, what I wanted to ask you too before we go, uh, your, your wife. I got to mm -hmm. ask this, man, because a lot of people get caught up in just, and they see Jay Butler. They see Jay Butler, Coach Jay Butler. Can you speak just a little bit of, on, on, on the, the role that your wife? plays with, with you, you know, recruiting, basketball practice, different things like that. Um, don't know if you have any kids, but uh, taking care of the kids or or different things like that. Because the reason why I ain't is because there's a lot of people that, that, that that's in the coaching and they need to hit his parents, student athletes. And they, what is the role that Miss Butler played for all this to be, the, all the success you had as far as coaching, Far as planning and, and, and different things of that nature, and I, I promise I'm gonna let you go once you answer this question for me. The, the, the one, the one thing a lot of people is it, it, really no Jay Butler without you know my wife, my wife Shay Thomas Butler, who she went to high school with me. We didn't, we didn't date in high school. We ended up meeting each other. Uh, well, not meeting each other. We ended up start dating. We were working at a full time job at Juvenile Justice, wow. but just. Just she's been 100% support of me coaching because it's a lot of times that it's it's long hours. Like you know, today I left out the house six seven o'clock this morning, and it, it's about to be eight o'clock, and it's it's long hours. And you know, a lot of times she's going to a lot of 
cheerleading events, dancing events with my daughter, who's, who's 13 years old in the eighth grade. And, you know, I miss a lot of events because I'm traveling, recruit. Uh, we playing in the CIAA tournament. My daughter could be having a dance performance or a chili uh, competition. And my wife step up and, and, and get it done for us. So mm-hmm. just, just you got to have family support. And uh, my wife, she, she she has a health condition. I don't really like to get, you know, too much involved. But she has a health condition that, you know, a lot of times she's not able to do a lot of things. So my parents and, you know, her parents, aunts and uncles, and they all step in and help out. And, we, you know, we both from the D.C. area. And, uh, they, you know, my mom and my sister, they, you know, her her brother, they would, they would jump on the road in a heartbeat and come down here and make sure, you know, you know, their granddaughter is taken care of because I'm I'm in Connecticut and my wife might be in the hospital, different things like that. But my wife, she 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 she's like the rock of the family. She hold it down. And, and, and like I said, it's all about family. Is and, and that's the one thing at Virginia Union. It's a, it's a family type feel. And uh it, it's it's no Jay Butler without my wife, my daughter, my mom, my dad, different things. It's 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 like one big family. And like just, you know, a lot of people know grew up right there on Sheriff Road. Right. Man, I, I had my grandmother lived on one floor, my my aunt lived on the third floor, my uncle lived on the second floor. Right. Uh we own a lodging mat right next door of Sheriff Road, uh, across the street. I got my barber shop at Travis. <laughs> and yeah, so Sheriff Road, that was my stopping grounds when I was young. Right. So, but I was back and forth, DC Berlin. But if you Dean Wood. Sheriff Road, Carver, Roper, that's where I was hooping at. And uh, I had uncles all that. They played baseball, but I was a basketball guy. Yeah. Hey, I got this saying, right, that everybody, because uh-huh. I'm from I'm from around the, the Deanwood area. I went to Roper. I went to H.D. Woodson. All oh, the God. great basketball players come from that area. I tell her, you were supposed, <laughs> you, you were supposed to go to H.D., wasn't you? Uh, uh, it was... If I if, if I'd have stayed on that side, I would have been Carver, Roper, yeah, probably HD. My mom and dad went to Spring Oh. But I was I look, I was a little off the hook when I was young. They said we gotta get him off of Sheriff Road. <laughs> they, they said if he stay on Sheriff Road, he might not be sitting in his chair this day. So I, I had to go. So they put me in private school out in Maryland, and, but I always gravitated to Sheriff Road. Absolutely. Because even when a lot of people, when I got the curl, they was like, where's Shorty? Where you live at? So Malcolm Battle, Charlie Moe, all them dudes, they was like, Shorty, where you going? I said, man, you drop me off right here? Yeah. You drop me off on Sheriff Road. So I said, yeah, my grandmother lived here. I've been here since the 80s. Absolutely. You know, so I grew up right there, Sheriff Road. My uncles, my cousins, we were all up and down Sheriff Road. Gotcha. And they were baseball guys, but I, I was the Hoover. Wow. Favorite go-go band? Oh, Backyard. Oh. All heard day. It. You heard it. You heard it. Backyard. Backyard. I, 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 I be arguing. Oh, look, my best friends, mm-hmm. my best friends, they were, they were all up, uptail dudes. So we got the curl, you know, we party and this and that. It was Backyard. Absolutely. Yeah. It was the, the Mac, Ibex, all of that. Yeah. Yes, yes sir. <laughs> Um, if anybody want to get in contact with you, how could they go about getting in contact with you? Now, everybody, my cell phone, you can get, look, you can get my cell phone, my email, llbutler at vuu.edu. I won't put my cell phone out there too much, but a lot of people got my number all over the city, but and look, I don't really duck. You call me on my cell phone, I'm going to pick it up and answer, and if I can't help you, I'm going to help you get somewhere, else, especially kids out of the DMV area. I tell them all the time, look, I, look I, I got too many players, but look, I can make this call for you or or send, send, uh, email this coach and mention my name. And, you know, so I'm, I'm all about trying to help the kids out of the D.C. area, man, because I remember a time where it was guys reaching out, helping me. And, uh, you know, I, I look up to some of them guys that, you know, helped me through, you know, when, when I was with that little guy trying to get on the court and they helped me, you know, out. So uh, coaches that helped me get in school and different things like that. And I saw, you know, I saw my dad do it. I saw Carol Holmes do it. Uh, I worked for Coach McLeese, Coach Mack up at Dunbar. And I, he, I worked with him up at uh, UDC. He, got, he gave me my opportunity at UDC to coach uh, got, on the women's side. 
I got him up next, man. Next, next, next week. I oh, got yeah. Coach so I tell you, yeah, Coach, Coach Black, that's my man. I told Coach Black, man, look, if you don't give me that opportunity, <laughs> I, I, I'm not sitting here. And yeah. I remember my man, rest in peace, Bush Cherry, Bush Cherry, <laughs> and rest in peace, Hollis, <laughs> Hollis Johnson. Both <laughs> of them, pushed, they pushed for me to get the job. They said, they said Coach Jay Butler could get the job done on the <laughs> women's side. Absolutely. So, and it's, 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 it's unfortunate. Both of my guys, man, yeah. both, both of them passed away. And like Bush Cherry, he was my mentor, man, and one of my best friends. And we talk every day, man. Really okay. hurt. That did hurt the game, hurt the AAU scene when Bush uh, passed away. Absolutely. But uh, nah, man, this 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 been great, man. Thanks, thanks for having me. Anytime you want me. A lot of times I kind of stay away because I don't know what questions you know to ask. And oh, yeah, yeah. I try to stay off the scene, but. Yeah. You know, I said, hey, let me know. This is my guy. He always, you know, inboxing me and we bump into each other. So yeah. I said, let me let me go ahead and show my man some love. Man, I appreciate it, man, because uh, uh, the people in the DMV area, they need to hear this. Um, there's a lot that been going on. So when we got one of our own that sits in the seat like you do, you know, I just want the people to hear, educate the people and not be afraid to, you know, let them know that we do have somebody that can, you know, help us out and, and files what we need to know what's going on because the rules change in the NCAA. So we we, we, yeah. we need to know what we can do and what we can't do and how we go about it. And like you said, building relationships. And, and when I started to do this, that's what it was about. It was about building relationships and bringing you to the world. Cause you, you, you are, man, you, you somebody I look up to, I met you like years ago. Yeah at a game and you out recruiting. I think when you first started recruiting Khalif and them, <laughs> back then, yeah, back then. You know, uh, my man, Kyrell, Kyrell yeah. Green. Yeah, over at, uh, what do you say? I did. I did, right? Yeah. yeah. So, man, it just, you know, I look up to you, man, and anytime you need me, man, if you can't make it down this way, you know, you reach out, I, I get there and right, I right, you know, right. send you the information. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm about to see you. I'm about to see you some gear. You know, you throw us a yep, Coach Butler. <laughs> yes, sir. I appreciate it, yeah. man. Uh, thank you again for coming on, man. I know you gotta get out of there, man. I don't want you to get in trouble with the wife, and I know you want to catch the game. So it's been I an honor, man. Catch the game. <laughs> it's been an honor, and we 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 will do this again, man. I appreciate you, and I want you to enjoy the rest of your day. I appreciate it, man. And uh, thanks. Anytime you need me, just let me know, buddy. Absolutely. Coach Jay Butler, y'all, man. We out, man. All right, have a good one. You too. Okay.